Hey everybody, welcome to Boneyard Labs. Today we are going to be talking about GeodeNet and what you need to get started in mining. Now this isn't going to be how to set it up. This is just going to be a brief overview so that you can determine if it's a right fit for you for your project. Without further ado, let's get started. Here is what it takes to get a GeodeNet up and running and running well. Of course, you're going to need the miner itself, okay? So I'll leave the link in the description where you can pick this guy up. That's about 700 bucks, a little bit over by the time you uh, pay for shipping and handling. So the first thing you're going to need is you're going to need a location for the antenna. You're going to need it outdoors, you're going to need it high up, and you're going to need a full view or as close to a full view of the sky as you can get because that will impact the performance and thus your payout of your miner. The next thing is you need a clear view of the sky, okay? The most optimum location for an installation is to be able to have a 360 degree view of the whole sky with no obstructions below a 10 degree angle from the center line of that antenna on a horizontal plane. So those are the big, big things, okay? Those are the most important things you need in order to set this thing up. If you can find a location that's good, you can see the whole sky, that's, that's most of the battle to get up and running, okay? So from here, what else do you need? Um, other stuff you're gonna need, you are gonna need power. It doesn't actually come with one of these, okay? So you're gonna need one of these guys. It's uh, This is a USB-C right here, but I think uh, at least the one I received came with a USB-A and then the USB-C side plugged into the device itself. So you're gonna need one of these. Odds are you probably have one laying around somewhere. I'm sure we all do. So you're gonna need one um, in addition to the purchase here. It comes with a 30 foot cable, but if that is not long enough to get to the location that you wanna to get to, and they recommend to get a RF cable extension, with one of these adapters. So they have some details in there to go over as, as far as what to pick um, in your shopping for extension cords, okay? Obviously you'll need a place to plug it in. So when you're surveying your location, think about that. You're gonna need to run power to this box, okay? The next thing you need, of course, is internet. The whole thing runs on Wi-Fi. So you need 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi. This will not run on 5G internet. So if you have a good Wi-Fi signal, 2.4, you gotta think wherever you're gonna put this needs to have a good signal so it can maintain its reliability for communication. Next thing you're gonna need is you're gonna need to go to their Discord because that is where they have all of their documents for um, troubleshooting and for installation and for setup and for upgrading and all sorts of really good resources, okay? So that's where they actually have everything. To get there, you wanna go to geodnet.com, scroll all the way to the bottom, and you will find under social, you click on Discord. Now, I'm not gonna go ahead and go through all that because I'm already in here, but it's pretty straightforward. Uh, and if you go down to, if you go down to the resources tab, manuals and documents, you'll find a handful of really good resources here for you to go through. So the next thing you'll need is a GeodeNet console account. To do that, it's just like setting up an account for any other website, very easy. You hit sign up, you enter in your info, wham, bam, bam, password, you're good. Next thing you will need is a MetaMask account, all right? You gotta go to metamask.io, and you, if you don't already have a MetaMask account, you can set one up. I won't go over all this right now because there's a million videos out there that tell you how to set one up. Another thing you might consider getting is a different type of antenna mount bracket. I didn't like what the ones that it came with. They were just kind of, they were not really all that strong, and I heard reports of some people seeing them break over time and stuff, so I actually ended up designing this. So I got a couple different versions. I'll, send, I'll put a link in the description for this video. Uh, if you have a 3D printer or if you know somebody who does and you say, hey, can I must send you these files? You can print this off for me, and boom, off you go. And of course, uh, in order to install this, you're gonna need all the obvious uh, basic tools for the job. So you're gonna need a, you know, like a power drill, screwdriver, ladder, safety gear, um, things like that. If you live in the USA and you are living in a community that is oh, that is operated by an HOA and they put up a big stink about you wanting to install an antenna on your rooftop, I would highly suggest you take a look at the FCC 21-10 that I have up here on the screen um, because it is it was released and updated a couple years ago to include um technology such as this where i'm not going to get into it because it's it's a really long document okay i'm not going to get into all the details you could look at it if you're really interested in getting hoa's approval um or excuse me informing hoa of your rights is really how it is uh but essentially what this does is it brings the fcc's rule up to date with the expansion of today's current technology. Um, I'll leave it as a link in the description for this and you guys can go over it and, and read some of the history and maybe I'll cover this in more detail in a different video, but um, yeah, this could potentially help you out. 
that's all I wanted to cover today. Like I said, it wasn't going to be a how-to video. It was just to try to expose you guys to the information on what it takes to install it and what kind of things to consider that you might not have at the forefront of your mind when you're looking at this project at the moment. So if you guys like this video, please consider giving it a thumbs up uh, and please consider subscribing to the channel. I will be trying to give more information as I am able to. Other than that, I hope you guys have a good one and happy mining.